Hello friends, this video on microorganisms friend and foe part 12 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now we will see how microbes are useful as biofertilizers. Now before we talk about microbes used as biofertilizers, first let us try to understand what are fertilizers and why do we need them. Now fertilizers are those substances which are added to enhance the fertility of the soil. Now if we want to grow crops, if we want to in increase the crop productivity, we need to ensure that the soil is fertile enough so that the plants which grow on that particular soil can get all the required nutrients, minerals and thus can give better productivity. Now, Adding fertilizer is just like externally adding more and more nutrients to the soil. So more phosphates and more nitrogen can be added to the soil by fertilizers. So these fertilizers result in higher yields and healthy plants because they directly increase the nutrient content of the soil. Now there are certain disadvantages associated with chemical fertilizers. Now some of these are the chemical fertilizers are basically chemicals, so they are basically made up of harmful chemicals which can be harmful for other life forms. Even though it, increasing, it is increasing the soil fertility, but it can be harmful for so many living organisms present inside the soil. For example, earthworms, other small insects which live in the soil, they might be harmed. If this toxic material is present inside the crops and if the crops are eaten up by other animals, it can cause harm in them. It can cause imbalance in the soil pH, so the acidity or basic nature of the soil can get disturbed due to the presence of a lot of chemicals. Results in soil infertility, though the purpose of fertilizer is to increase the soil fertility, but if fertilizer is applied to the soil in excess, in that case it can spoil the soil fertility because too much of chemical substances in the soil will also spoil the nature of the soil degrades ecosystem because when it is a toxic material it can kill many life forms of the soil ecosystem therefore the soil ecosystem might get disturbed plants become susceptible to many diseases sometimes what happens is if the plant if uh, these kind of fertilizer if the same type of fertilizer is being applied over and again very frequently and in high amount so sometimes the plant become very much used to or those kind of fertilizers do not work for the plants. So the plants instead of uh, growing better, they tend to get diseases. Fruits and vegetables have high toxic residues as I said. Now since these are toxic materials, there are chances that they might remain somewhere inside a fruit or a vegetable. So when that fruit or vegetable is being eaten by some other animal, it can cause some harm to that animal. Environmental pollution, if fertilizer is used in excess and immediately after fertilization, if the field is watered either by rain or by irrigation. So there are chances that the fertilizers might get washed away by the water and it can, it can cause water pollution to the nearby water bodies. Maybe the nearby pond or the nearby river might get polluted because of this toxic substance which might get washed away by water. So these are some of the disadvantages associated with the use of chemical fertilizers and all these disadvantages are because of the poisonous nature of these chemicals. So we can say that the fertilizers are advantageous in terms of that it uh, increases the fertility of the soil but at the same time it is not eco-friendly so it, it harms the environment at the same time. So therefore was introduced biofertilizers. So biofertilizers are like living organisms which act as fertilizers. So these are basically living organisms. So they are not chemicals. So they will not cause any harm to the environment. So they will be eco-friendly. But at the same time, they will act as fertilizers. That is, they will provide nutrients to the soil. So they will enrich the soil fertility. So that means it will have all the advantages of fertilizers, but it will not have the disadvantages of fertilizers. So these are living organisms which enrich the soil nutrient quality. Now source of biofertilizers are bacteria, fungi and cyanobacteria. All these microbes, uh, they help to increase the nutrient qual quality of the soil. So let us look at some of the examples of biofertilizers. 
Now, one good example is the nitrogen fixing rhizobium bacteria. So there is this bacteria called rhizobium and where do we find it? We find it in the root nodules of leguminous plants. Now what are leguminous plants? Plants like beans, peas, they are all, they all fall under the category of leguminous plants. So if you look at the roots of these plants, you actually see that there are these kind of structures and because of these, these nodule-like structures. So in these root nodules are present these bacteria called rhizobium. So this is a symbiotic association between the rhizobium bacteria and the root nodules of leguminous plant. Now what is symbiotic association? It is basically an association where both the parties get benefited. So one party is rhizobium which gets its shelter and food from the root nodules and the other party is this root nodule of the plant. So how is the plant getting benefited because this bacteria helps to fix atmospheric nitrogen into the soil. So now if the soil has more nitrogen, who will take the benefit out of it? The plant of course. So the plant allows rhizobium to stay in its root nodules because this bacteria brings nitrogen to the plant and nitrogen is a very important nutrient for the plant. So the plant needs it. At the same time, the bacteria's advantage is that it gets its food and shelter from the plant. So this bacteria fixes atmospheric nitrogen and therefore nitrogen being an essential nutrient for the plant, so we can say that it increases the nitrogen content in the soil. So basically this rhizobium bacteria acts as a biofertilizer because it is increasing the nutrient content or the nutrient quality of the soil. So this was one example. Let us look at the next example. It is again a symbiotic association. So let me write it here. Symbiotic association is an association where there is mutual benefit. So here again, this is another symbiotic association between fungi and certain plants. So this type of association is called mycorrhiza or mycorrhiza. So this is the name given to this type of association between fungi and plants. Now how the fungi helps here? Here, so here in this picture, you can actually look at the mycorrhizal root tips. So here you can see they have nodule-like structures, right? their root tips. So here some fungi are present and these fungi they absorb phosphorus from the soil and pass it to the plant. So that ways it helps to increase again they act as biofertilizers. How? Because they help to increase the nutrient quality of the soil and it helps in the passage of phosphorus from soil into the plant. So again another symbiotic association. So this is resistant to pathogens. Also, it prevents the attack of disease causing microorganisms. So that means also it is beneficial to the plant. The, therefore, it ensures better plant growth and development. So this also acts as a biofertilizer to the plant because it provides a macronutrient that is phosphorus to the plant and rhizobium provides nitrogen to the plant. Both nitrogen and phosphorus they are like macronutrients, very very important nutrients for plant growth and development. The third example is cyanobacteria which are also called as blue-green algae. These bacteria are also called as blue-green algae. They also help in fixing atmospheric nitrogen and thus they add organic matter to the soil. So some of the examples of cyanobacteria like anabena, nostoc, they are examples of cyanobacteria which fix atmospheric nitrogen into the soil. So these are examples of some microorganisms which help to fix nitrogen or phosphorus into the soil and therefore act as fertilizers. But at the same time, they do not have any disadvantages of chemical fertilizers attached with them. Therefore, it is completely beneficial. So we get the benefit of fertilizers. At the same time, we do not have any uh, risk to the environment. Thank you. Please visit www.examfew.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.